Welcome, everyone, to SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. Thank you so much for listening. We have a fantastic episode for you this week. Mike North, NFL VP of Broadcast Planning, who was a major, major player in making the NFL schedule, uh, taped this pod with me Wednesday night right after the NFL schedule came out. So everything about the 2024 NFL schedule is covered with Mike North from the NFL. So you will uh, want to listen to this if you're an NFL fan. And then, of course, we have Sal Akata and Train of Thoughts following the Mike North interview. Before we get to it, just a quick reminder, if you missed any recent episodes of SI Media with Jimmy Trainer, make sure you check them out. We had Katie Nolan on the podcast last week, John Oran two weeks ago, John Sterling three weeks ago, Malika Andrews, Cody Rhodes four weeks ago. So check those out if you did not listen to them and make sure you subscribe to SI Media with Jimmy Trainer and please leave a review and rate the podcast as well on Apple. All right, let's get to it. Mike North, NFL VP broadcast planning on the NFL schedule and then Salakata and Trainer Thoughts all right here right now on SI Media with Jimmy Trainer. All right, joining me now, very excited to do this, although this is the shortest prep I've ever had for a podcast. <laughs> we should have linked you the schedule. It would have been nice. The NFL schedule came out at 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. It's now 8.30, and we have the NFL VP of Broadcast Planning, the man who helps make the schedule with a couple of other people, Mike North, who was here with us last year. So now I appreciate him uh, coming back for a second visit. Mike? Good busy day. You. Yeah, how are you? Here. Great day. Great day. You know, this is interesting. You're kind of doing it live, right? You're, yeah. you're yep. almost like yep. the, the college basketball tournament bracket reveal. Like, what are you looking at? What are the first things you're looking at when you see this thing for the very first time? Well, I have to say, on from a selfish standpoint, because I knew you were having, I knew I was having you on. I went back. I remember last year I said to you, I, you know, I tried to keep it positive. I think the one thing I said was like, can we get it? Can we stop with the Raiders? They're never good and they're on prime time five or six times every year. And you're like, well, I don't know. And then, I mean, they were literally over 500, like twice in 20 years, only two primetime appearances for the Raiders this year. So I'm going to take full credit for that. It was all you. All you. It was Working all me. I had all throughout the process. So I appreciate that. On the flip side, it seems like the Texans are the darlings this year. And are, they got right? three they straight, three straight primetime games at, 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 at one point, I think it's weeks nine, 10 and 11. Uh, obviously CJ Stroud there. Was that a concerted effort? Let's get the Texans and see CJ Stroud on prime time this year. Cause yeah, look, last year, I think they were only prime time once or twice. Zero as scheduled. Zero. When we put this schedule out, right, we had a f- conversation a year ago. They were probably yeah. our biggest whiff. Um, yeah. They were literally zero. They were what? Three or four years in a row of three or four wins. And I'm not sure anybody saw the Texans coming last year, but once they did, uh, tried to find a way, like you said, we did get him into a prime time window in week 18, got him into that Saturday uh, on ESPN uh, leading into week 18, knowing they needed to win and then get help. And they got that help when Tennessee knocked off Jacksonville, um, then go get a win in a playoff game like they're here to stay. I think they've earned it. So, yeah, you do see them on some national television. They've also got a really good schedule, uh, maybe even more impressive with Houston. Not so much those three prime times all right in a row, but. We included them in our Christmas round robin. No one were playing yeah. on a Wednesday. Uh, you got to play the previous Saturday now. So just like Sunday to Thursday, we're playing Saturday to Wednesday. It's May. We're guessing right now who's seven months from now, which four teams all play each other, one home and one road for each that can hold down, you know, two national windows on that Saturday and two national windows on that Wednesday. That's a pretty narrow needle to thread. So you find Houston in that conversation, that's probably even a better testament to how we feel about the Texans. The primes in October are nice, but those two national windows down the stretch, that I think shows you where we think they're going to be come December. All right. Since you mentioned Christmas, so first year NFL will have two games on a Wednesday, which we'll get into. They go to Netflix one o'clock, four thirty. So I want to ask you about that. But I'm going to tell you the number one question I've gotten from my Twitter followers steadily throughout the day, and I don't think you can answer this because I'm not. I don't know if it's known. I'll try. Or who's producing those Netflix games? Who's announcing? I mean, obviously, the announcers will depend on what networks producing them. But the, who's doing those Netflix game has been the question I've gotten the most today. Believe it or not. Yeah. And the honest answer is TBD. Um, You know, so much of the deal points that they were working through these last couple of weeks uh, focused on, you know, things like global rights and and all those kind of things, promotional opportunities, uh, commercial availability, 
um, you know, it's the first truly global rights deal like this where one broadcaster, you know, one uh, sporting event and, and literally having, you know, global rights to it. So there's a lot of I's to dot and T's to cross. They obviously acknowledge that they're going to need, you know, somebody to produce and direct it and point cameras at the field and get it on television. But I wouldn't doubt for a second when we get to December 25th, it's going to look and sound like an NFL football game. They're probably going to end up working with existing NFL crews, existing NFL talent, similar to the way Amazon, when they picked up the NFL rights a few years ago, they didn't have a remote production house. They didn't have people on staff. So they went and hired NBC and NBC was able to use, you know, their deep bench of people to uh, fill out the the Amazon production crew. I, I think that's what you're going to see with Netflix. My best guess, probably CBS and Fox mm. on a Sunday afternoon. They've got a lot of crews, a lot of good crews. The talent might be a little bit different. You know, you might hire the producer and the director and the AD and the camera guys and the sound guys, but the talent, you could probably go in a lot of different directions. I'm sure you're going to have some regular names that, you know, we're used to seeing, whether it's NFL Network talent or former players. Maybe there's some guys, you know, coming out of retirement, coming out of other network broadcast booths. Maybe it's guys we haven't heard of. Maybe you do it like Nickelodeon does it, where they find some of their talent. Um, maybe you get some Netflix folks uh, behind the mic. Uh, I'm sure there's time to figure that out, but I would I would feel pretty confident as we sit here today that it's going to look and sound like an NFL game by the time we get there. Who ultimately makes the decision on the announcers for those games? Uh, I'm not familiar with the contract principles. My guess is Netflix has, you know, I'm not sure what you call it, first, first rights or first obligation. I suspect <laughs> the NFL probably has some, you know, uh, I don't know if that's pr approval, but, you know, we'll work together. We yeah. all want the same thing here. And I think it's worth noting. I'm not sure if you mentioned it or not. Mm -hmm. This isn't a one and done for Netflix. They're, right. they're multi years. So there's going to be games on Netflix, I think, for the next three seasons. So this isn't going to be one time. And, mm -hmm. hey, that was fun. Never again. This is going to be something that I think we're going to build towards and, and learn a lot from and innovate. And I, I think you'll see something maybe a little outside the box. But again, I think it's going to look and sound like NFL football on TV. A lot of people are surprised about the Christmas games because they're on a Wednesday. Was that a no-brainer for you guys after seeing what the Christmas Day ratings have been in the past? Yeah, I wouldn't call it a no-brainer. To your point, Wednesday is a little outside the box for us, so um, maybe it wasn't a slam dunk. But mm -hmm. certainly as we talked about it a little bit more, you see the viewership, as you mentioned, from the previous years. We've done triple headers each of the last two years. I think we've played Christmas for the last five years or something like that. Um you know, the fans have spoken. They they speak with their remotes and, and they tell us. And when you get 29 million people watching that Vegas uh Kansas City game on Christmas last year, that that kind of tells you that it's 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 something we should probably keep doing. So uh figured out pretty early in the process how do you get to a Wednesday? Like we said, we're gonna do Saturday to Wednesday, similar to Sunday to Thursday. Um, gotta manage who that falls on. Do they have another short week somewhere? How far away is it from this short week? Where's their bye week? Does it break up that run? Um, there's a lot of learnings to be had, but I think Sunday, Saturday, Wednesday, not dissimilar to Monday, Sunday, Thursday, which happens in this league. I think it happens to maybe 10 teams total. If you include the four in the Christmas round, Robin. So, um, yeah, this is, this is the new normal. And we figured out a way to get to Wednesday. We found four teams that we thought were going to be playoff relevant down the stretch, all of whom played each other, all of whom won home, won away. It worked out well. Then, you know, Hans Schroeder and the programming team, the strategy team took that to market and thankfully had a lot of really interested bidders and and landed on, like we said, really an unprecedented historic partner in Netflix. At least surprising news of all, there'd be a lot of bidders for an NFL package. Yeah, extra um, NFL games, right? It's, yeah. it's rare that we have extra windows to sell to yeah. somebody. And yeah, there were there were plenty of bidders lined up at the door. It's a good problem. <clears throat> I, you know, speaking of that, do you... Do you ever get worried about getting to a point where maybe CBS and Fox could get a little annoyed? Every day. Okay. Every day. I mean, think about okay. where we are now versus where we were not that long ago. The 9.30 a.m. games internationally, of which I think we've already said we're going to be adding more of them. We might be looking at six, seven, eight of those next year. The full season of Thursdays, it started, you know, just Thanksgiving, and then it was a half season of Thursdays, and now it's a full season of Thursdays. You've got more games on Monday night when you Monday think night about double another five sides, five, ESPN, five double headers again. Uh, yeah. I think there's four. I think there's three side by sides: ESPN and ABC, and one ESPN, ESPN Plus side by side. So, right. to your point, all that inventory comes from somewhere. 
Um, CBS and Fox went into these latest rounds of deals, eyes wide open, though. They knew exactly what they were bidding on, the exact number of games they were going to get each day. It's on us to spread them around uh, across all these weekends and make sure that, you know, to the best we can, every weekend has, you know, quality and quantity, not just in the primetime windows, but also in the Sunday afternoons. And yeah, CBS and Fox are, are are constantly worried, as are we. Honestly, as we look ahead to, you know, all this talk about 18 weeks or or two buys per team as we move forward, you know, that, that's what worries me maybe even more. We've got 32 buys right now that you got to fit somewhere in there, October, November, and you do get some thin Sunday afternoons already, whether it's four or five games per for CBS and Fox. Right, right. You're going to cram mm-hmm. 32 more buys in there, 64 buys spread through weeks, what, four through 15, that's an awful lot of blank spaces on this pretty little grid with all of our <laughs> games. And I, and I worry what those Sunday right. afternoons might look like with all those extra buys. Yeah. That'd be interesting because the fans will, once you guys actually hook us up and get that Super Bowl to President's Day weekend and make that the ultimate holiday weekend, and then we can get the 18 games, the two buys. I think, listen, if, if, if an offshoot of that is a lighter schedule here and there, we'll take it because Everyone wants that Super Bowl on on President's Day weekend. Yeah, I don't think Everybody. we need both, though, right? I don't think we need eighteen games over nineteen weeks. And- well, a lot of the players say you go to give us if you're going to give us an extra game, we need an extra buy. I mean, that's above but I think, my. Doesn't that push us past President's weekend? I think we're one weekend short of President. Oh, if you start now. it maybe a week early, uh, yeah. Listen, that's your play job. On Labor Day weekend, like we used to play on Labor Day. Weekend. I would love that. I'd love that. Everybody's that's, at the know. beach. Everybody's on vacation. That's they, true. Are they that's coming true. to the stadium? Are they watching on television? I mean, look, the NFL moves the needle. I'm sure if we played opening weekend on Labor Day weekend, the fans would find us. But that's oh, something that we it. used to do when we moved away from. I'm not sure how quickly we're going to move back to it. And I know the commissioner's out there, you know, talking about reducing the preseason in 18 and 2 and whatever. But, man, we were 40 years playing 16 and 4. Right. We just moved to 17 and 3 just a couple of years ago. I'm not sure we're moving 18 and 2 just yet so you think we'll figure it out if they tell us to but so you think we can get to a super bowl on president's day weekend but without adding an extra game or an extra buy okay that would be nice that that would be nice i don't know how we do that unless you know the mayans or the aztecs change the calendar Mm -hmm. you probably have to do one or the other just to move our season back one week to get to president's weekend and yeah i'm I'm not sure what that really means though you know you get monday off what do we do we kick off the super bowl a little later and and people can stay watching later the kids can stay up later or do we keep it in this 6 30 6 45 range and then what you just don't have to wake up early the next day the game's over by 10 30 11 i I don't know it's it's a good it's a long it's a long day it's a long day it's it's a long long day you have a 50 hour pregame everyone's at parties (laughs) it's a long day so and it, it is a holiday in this country whether what you know take out whether you stay up late there's the, it is a holiday in this country i mean i'd put it right behind christmas and thanksgiving if you're asking me to rank them um so i want to ask you i'm going to do a lot of general because like i haven't had a full chance to dip into week by week i did the other specific though i saw the jets what i thought was injured so you gave them six primetime games after the disaster of last year and they all come up to week 11 was that strategic? It, it wasn't one where we said, hey, no Jets primes in December. It wasn't like that. When you tell the computer, here's their opponents, here's a couple of games that we sure think are worthy of national television exposure. Let's go ahead and slot them in and, and see where they <clears> fall. <throat> it wasn't a conscious effort to keep you know any of the primes out of December. Plus, as you know, that's what flexible scheduling is for. I mean, right. you think about that stretch. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I think they play Buffalo, Seattle, the Rams, I think they've got some pretty good opponents. Miami probably in there somewhere. Like, if the Jets are playoff relevant, it's a reasonable expectation that you'll probably find another one or two of those moving to prime time if they're playing for something. Right. Well, that team was good last year, even without the quarterback, right? They got to seven wins, I think. They uh, I wouldn't say got good. Better. Let's not say good, but let's say playoff let's relevant, say, uh, at least through Thanksgiving. They probably only got better through the draft and through free agency. And certainly early in the season, I think Aaron's return and return to health and, you know, Last time we saw him play, he was playing at an MVP level. If he's if he's Aaron Rodgers, I think the Jets are going to be there. And certainly early in the season, it's the kind of thing that all the fans and all the broadcast partners are going to want to check out. You can't say this. I can. I think the Jets are always risky in that situation because as a his, the fran- the history of the franchise is they're an embarrassment. I mean, they're not an you, embarrassment. If you take the totality of their existence, 
outside of a handful of years, they're an embarrassment. So they're always a risk as a franchise. You know, so you can't say that. I can't. Let me ask you some generals. Go. In terms of difficulty, where would you rank this year? Uh, very difficult, more difficult than years past. Same, because you have the Christmas little change with maybe some Saturday stuff. Never gets any easier. You know, none of us signed up for this thinking, hey, next year is going to be a cakewalk. Like we know every year's um, always going to be a challenge, always more constraints, always more requirements. Our constituents are getting smarter. Our broadcast partners have a better feel for how we can do what we do. We're a long way from the days when Val Pinchbeck used to sit in that room and hang those tags one at a time. He couldn't even contemplate some of the stuff that we're trying to think about now, whether it's rest disparity or miles traveled or multiple short weeks and spreading your short weeks from your bye week with your mini buys. Um, There's all kinds of things that go into this puzzle. And I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that we haven't even gotten to yet. So whether you're talking about, you know, bigger, faster computers, machine learning, AI, whatever it is we're going to have at our disposal sometime, um, the puzzle's never going to get any easier to solve. But um, this one was unique like all the others. I did not think we were going to be playing on a Wednesday when we set out to build this puzzle, but (laughs) uh, figured out pretty quickly again, like we said, Sunday, Saturday, Wednesday is doable. It's not dissimilar from Monday, Sunday, Thursday, which happens in this league. So uh, once we figured out, we could probably thread that needle and then try to figure out, you know, kind of like you were hinting at, you want all your good games in prime time, but you got to have some good games still for Sunday afternoon. Certainly for Sunday afternoon at 425. That's the Absolutely. most watched window we that's, have. That's the money time slot. People big forget games it. on the holidays, building yeah. Black Friday into a thing. Peacock's in the conversation now with the Brazil game. The ESPN Plus moves out of the Sunday morning slot to a side-by-side mm-hmm. Monday night. There's always moving pieces. There's always new puzzle pieces to kind of slot in there. Um, this one was a challenge. I'm sure next year is going to be yeah. even harder. Sunday 425 is still the money slot. I think that's the hardcore NFL fan. That's where they want their good game. I was, oh, let, uh, let me stick with this now. Jay. Most difficult, biggest challenge about putting together this year's schedule. If there was one thing. Yeah, look, it was, it was probably trying to <laughs> weasel our way, not weasel our way, work our way through uh, that week 17 there. This is, this is truly unprecedented. We're talking about two games on Wednesday one game on Thursday, three games on Saturday, a Sunday night game, a Monday night game that only leaves eight games for Sunday afternoon for CBS and Fox. So they're only going to have to have four each. So you couldn't put all the best games in prime time. You got to make sure that there's games left for Sunday afternoon, knowing they're going to be a little thin, at least in terms of quantity. Um, You got your NFL network triple header in there. So five games in the TBD pool, which one of those are going to materialize as worthy of national television. That was uh, that, that was a new one on me. I've been doing this a long time. I don't remember a year quite uh, a week quite that constrained. Um, and it kind of had a trickle down effect through the rest of the year. Um, you know, you might solve week 17, but you're going to pay for it maybe in week 10 or week five or somewhere. Right. So can you spread around what's left after you've picked your primetime games? Can you move the buys around strategically, some of which track to international games, whether you're coming back from London or coming back from Germany? Uh, our hands get tied quick and we get painted into a corner, but you know, judging by the network partners' reactions today when they got their schedule, you know, I think we checked a lot of big boxes. Nobody got everything, but I think everybody got something. <clears throat> I, I know. I thought the Thursday Amazon schedule was their best one by far this year. I thought they got a really good schedule. But I, I, let me say that for a little later because I want to ask you this while I, I, we're talking about the difficulties. I was a, I was surprised, not dis- pleasantly surprised, I guess you could say, that you went Ravens Chiefs week one because – I had sort of come along to this idea that for week one, for Thanksgiving, you don't need to put sort of the A plus matchup because everyone's going to watch those weeks no matter what. And you guys got really lucky. I don't want to use the word lucky because yeah, I, lucky. but fortunate okay. last week with the Lions last year, Lions beat the Chiefs week one. It was great. Ravens, Chiefs, you could make the argument one of the five, definitely without a doubt, no argument, one of the 10 best games of the season. You give it to us week one. What was the logic there? Yeah, part of it was, you know, do you want to go to that well again so quickly? Like we got, like you said, a little bit lucky with Detroit. They'd earned it though, right? They played yeah. their way into it. They gone Absolutely. in the limbo in game two seventy two and knocked off Aaron in his last game as a Packer. Like they'd earned it. I mean, Coach Campbell even said, you know, they're counting on us not to get our ass kicked. Like it wasn't even like that. It was like they'd earned this window. They'd earned this exposure. I think you could probably put Houston in that category this year. And there was a long time where we were thinking about Houston, Kansas City. Kind of that same mentality. Um, But, you know, once we started trying to solve for this Christmas Wednesday and this round robin, how difficult that was going to be. Finding four teams that all played each other, one home, one road, could anchor four national windows. That's where Houston, Kansas City ended up. So, 
there goes Houston off the table. We use Vegas, Kansas City on Black Friday. Mm. You know, Buffalo, Cincinnati, Baltimore, they were all going to be great. The one that was probably closest to getting played uh, other than Baltimore was the Chargers. I think it would have been a fun way to have Coach Harbaugh. Harbaugh, sure. It would have been yeah. interesting to see him going into Arrowhead and, and, and trying to get a W there. Um, but instead, we ended up with a Chargers home game. We had some constraints around SoFi. I think there's a Green Day concert in there in week two. So had to have either the Rams or Chargers home in week one. So they both didn't start with two consecutive road games. We ended up putting the Rams at Detroit. So you kind of came back around to a game like Baltimore, Kansas City. And you think about week one, you know, there's so much excitement. There's so much interest. You're right. You, me, and nine friends could probably go play Kansas City and 20 million people would watch. But right. now – Baltimore, Kansas City, that's something we can all look forward to for the next, what, four months. And it starts really another historic weekend. You think about Thursday for kickoff on NBC. They're coming out of the Olympics, so they're going to be promoting it the whole month of August. Then you've got that Friday game on Peacock, our first time down in Brazil with Eagles Packers. You come to Sunday afternoon, we're back to the single doubleheader instead of the double doubleheader. So Tom Brady's first game in the booth for Fox is a Cowboys game at Cleveland. And then the Sunday nighter, like we said, Rams Detroit playoff rematch, Matthew Stafford going back. And then, of course, the Jets and the Niners kind of bookending that opening weekend with the Monday nighter, Aaron Rodgers going back to Northern California. Yeah. It's going to be a really fun opening weekend. And mm. it didn't feel out of place at all to kind of kick it off with a big one. Yeah. Week one is loaded. You just touched on this and you led me right into my next question. <clears throat> Outside of Caitlin Clark, basically, there is no bigger ratings magnet in sports than the Dallas Cowboys. It doesn't matter if they're good. It doesn't matter if they're bad. It doesn't matter what's going on. When it comes to strictly ratings and viewership numbers, there's nothing like the Cowboys. Why is that? I think tradition's a big part of it. But yeah, this we is, all grew up in the 70s, right? America's team. The stadium, the fedora, there's an aura, films, the right? star, yeah. everything. But you're right. Even when they were 6 and 10... They were still our most watched games. Maybe it's Thanksgiving. Everybody just kind of watches the Cowboys yeah. on Thanksgiving. It's uh, you're, you're not wrong. But here's my question. Go. Have the Chiefs topped them? They're you have close. the Chiefs in what, like eight standalone games or something like At that? Least, probably year? more if I counted them all up. You think about all the Sunday afternoon games where CBS is going to have them as the lead 425 game. They're certainly maxed out in prime time. Three NBCs, two ESPNs. Uh, Amazon was really pushing hard to try to get them to Black Friday as we try to shift consumer behavior. It's not quite a national holiday, but maybe we're getting there. And, you know, to your point, kind of nothing moves the needle really like Kansas City right now. Um, for this year only, for 2024 only, who would you say would be the big, bigger needle mover, the Chiefs or the Cowboys? It's a great question. Um, I, I imagine when we stack up the ratings side by side, the Cowboys probably still have them. That's amazing. Air, my guess. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, but let's see what happens. Look, a lot of this is going to come down to, you know, performance on the field. Obviously, you know, losing Aaron Rodgers four plays in was not in the script for last season. Uh, I sure mm. hope, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes stays healthy. Uh, I sure hope Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey stay together. Um, there's a lot riding, obviously, on our biggest brands. And it's not just the Chiefs, right? It's the Cowboys. It's the Niners. It's the Eagles. Um, we're kind of all in on <sighs> the again, even though there was that moment kind of through late September, early October, where we weren't sure. Um there's there's but, a lot riding on Buffalo Bills. They're all over the national television yeah. schedule. So we kind of need everybody, right. you know, healthy and, and playing great. And hopefully everybody eight and eight heading into week 18. It does. It does feel like to me that the Chiefs are the new Cowboys. Now, I'm just talking about for now. I'm not talking about long term because Dallas has done this for so many years. But I, I, I don't think I can recall a team doing what the Chiefs have done in terms of interest. And it, it was before Taylor Swift. Obviously, she heightened it. She heightened it, but um, it's it's fat. And you guys with the schedule, if you're an NFL fan, you'll be seeing a lot of the Chiefs, and rightfully well, that's so. The job, right? We're yeah, not doing right. our jobs. If you take a Baltimore, Kansas City, or a Cincy, Kansas <laughs> City, or a Kansas City, Pittsburgh, and you put it, you know, in a Sunday afternoon where it might only be available in 15% of the country, and there's eight or nine other games going on, it gets lost. These are the games that the fans want to see. We're not doing the job if we're not putting those most interested, most interesting games in the biggest television windows. And to your point right now, those, those might be Kansas city chiefs. Games. Yeah. You mentioned this as well. The last, I believe it was two seasons. I don't think it was more than that, but I think it was the last two seasons, week one, CBS and Fox both had double headers. Uh, we, you know, here we got like in New York, you got four games. You got two games at one o'clock. This year, back to the old way, 
No national game for CBS at 425. It's a Fox only national game. It'll be Brady's first game behind the microphone with Kevin Burkhart in Cleveland for the Cowboys. Why that change? Yeah, it's been three years that we've done the double double three. header. We okay. did the new media deals. We thought it would be really fun to kind of have a bookend of the season, week one and week 18, four games in every market, double double header. You know, the challenge for us, as you can imagine, is trying to figure out the right way to balance between CBS and Fox in week one. None of us know who's going to be good. We, Kind of use the Packers on one side and maybe the Chiefs on the other. Maybe to your point, the Chiefs have kind of risen to another tier and it's hard to kind of balance with them. So what is the right balance between CBS and Fox? And we're guessing in May, which of these games are going to be comparable in September. And, and we don't even know these teams yet. So kind of working with CBS and Fox, going to try something a little bit different this year. We're going to take that double, double header. We're going to move it out of week one and we're going to go with something in week one to your point that fans are used to seeing one big national game. It's going to be on Fox. It's going to be a Cowboys game. It's going to be Tom Brady's first game. And we took that double, double header and we moved it down into December. If I could wave a magic wand. What I'd like to do some year is do it in week 17. I'd like yeah. to do 17 and week 18. Yeah. Double double header, four games in every market, tons and tons of division games, and just everybody watching games with playoff implications. Kind of hinted at it earlier. Week 17 was going to be tough this year with the two Wednesdays, a Thursday, three Saturdays. <clears throat> I'm not sure we were going to have enough inventory left to balance fairly between CBS and Fox. So we're going to do it in week 15, no buys, no international games, all the games in our hands. And that probably gives us a better chance after say 12 or 13 weeks to try to sequence the right matchups and the right windows in week 15 and really better balance that double, double header between CBS and Fox. We'll take a shot. We'll see how it works. And as always adjust and learn from it and go forward. Curious about a couple of things here. Um, <clears throat> in week 16, and I apologize, I'm doing this on the fly. Week 16, there's two Saturday games. Yep. Uh, one o'clock on NBC, 4.30 Fox. Any reason why you wouldn't do a 4.30 and an 8 o'clock instead of a 1 and a 4.30? And I had that same question for Christmas Day. I thought Christmas Day we'd get 4.30 and 8, it's 1 and 4. So tell me about week 16 and then the Christmas Day with the 1 and 4.30. Yeah, let, let me take your yeah. second question first and your first question second. Yep. Uh, thinking mm -hmm. about Christmas... Uh, one o'clock and four thirty. As we settled in on Netflix as the broadcast partner, like we talked about, it's not just about you know the domestic distribution here. It's about a global partnership. And as you think about the time zones, if we play in the afternoon in the states, you're starting to reach prime time in some other markets, some other big markets internationally, where Netflix has a real opportunity to you know reach a fan base that you know obviously we're trying to grow. You think about NFL flag coming to the Olympics now, like we're truly positioning ourselves as a global sport. If we play those Christmas games at night, you're talking about early in the morning or overnight in some really big international opportunity markets for us. So by playing in the middle of the day like this, then you have an opportunity to reach a more global audience. Now that takes you back four days prior to Saturday when you know you're playing in the afternoon on Wednesday. Oh, right. Got asking you. somebody to play Saturday night right. is a tougher putt. It shortens an already <clears throat> short week. So, you know, by playing in the afternoon on Wednesday, felt right to play in the afternoon on Saturday as well. And, you know, we played those Saturday afternoon games after, you know, the college football season for, for decades now. We, we play Saturday afternoons in December and uh, just felt like the right thing. If we were going to play in the afternoon on Wednesday, we should play in the afternoon on Saturday. Got it. Um, just looking here, Thanksgiving, Bears, Lions, Giants, Cowboys, Dolphins, Packers. I don't, I guess there's nothing really stands out there. Any, were you toying with anything else for Thanksgiving? Nothing stands the, out. You don't like Bears, Lions. You don't like Giants, Cowboys. You don't like Dolphins. Well, the Bears, the Bears are like, the, the Bears are the NFC Texans this year. You got the Bears a lot. Chicago we'll market. We'll it makes yep. sense. Yep. Um, yeah. Then you factor in Black Friday. You had to use Kansas City there. You want I a feel like Sunday night game. NBC's always thinking about how they're going to get their trucks from Thursday night to Sunday night right. on a back end of a long weekend. You get a San Fran Buffalo game there. So another big one, a um, mm -hmm. lot of mouths to feed Thanksgiving weekend. So like to me, we Thanksgiving, Sorry, you don't like it, but we it, were happy. No, no, no. Not that I don't like it. I just don't think it's that it's fine, but thanks. It's that's, fine. It, like, Thank but we've you. talked about it. The Thanksgiving games could be anything. We're going to watch them. We're trapped. We're trying yeah. to get away from our families. We got to watch the games. That? We say that, but I, I think we need to be careful about, you know, that becoming, you know, taking it for granted, right? If yeah. you put a game in there that just 
doesn't sound interesting. And suddenly fans are like, oh, maybe I won't tune in for this one. Maybe I will go hang out with Aunt Gladys and talk about politics or something else. Like, I I don't think that's where we want to go either. So (sighs) you got to balance that. You know, should it be one of your very best games? Maybe you don't need that in order to get to the viewership levels that you're hoping to see on that day, but probably shouldn't be one of your weaker games. I'll tell you the thing I don't love. I hate when Green Bay has to go to, I mean, when Miami has to go to these cold weather games, it's always a disaster. That's the only thing I don't, that that would be my, that would be the only thing. We'll order up some nice weather. It'll be 50 right. degrees that night. I got a tough question for you. Go ahead. I'm trying to figure out the way to wear this. Is, is the, does the NFL look at the expanded college football playoff as competition at all on those weeks when you will cross over. Look, I think you've heard the commissioner talk about this a lot. There's, there's, you know, nothing bad about people investing in football, whether it's the college football expanding their playoffs, whether it's the spring football league or leagues, however many of them are going to play um, again, trying to broaden our reach globally with more kids playing flag all across the year. Um, I, I don't think we look at them as competition. I think we look at it all as supplemental. These kids who are playing on Saturdays are kids that are going to be, you know, starting quarterbacks in the NFL next year. So you think about all these rookies that got drafted here in New England and Washington and Chicago and maybe Denver and Minnesota. Like these are names that we know because we've been watching them play on Saturdays for a couple of years now. So it, it, it's not a competition. It's definitely going to be, you know, a bit of uh, working it out with each other as they kind of come into a Saturday, like we said, where we've been for decades, you know, those late season Saturdays. The NFL plays games there. And and to our point earlier, you know, we're playing on that Saturday, December 21st, because those are the games that are going to lead in to our Wednesday game on Christmas. So, um, you know, the college folks knew we were going to be on that Saturday and and they're going to have to do what's right for their business and try to figure out the right way between Friday and Saturday uh, to schedule their first round playoff games. It's kind of new for them. And they're working it out with their conferences, with their presidents, uh, with their athletic directors, with their media partners. Uh, I'm not sure what you see this year is what you're going to see moving forward, but um, I, I do think you're going to see the NFL playing on those late season Saturdays, kind of like we've always done. And you you mentioned it, you know, it, it's on broadcast television, it's on NBC, it's on Fox, it's four teams that we think are going to be playoff relevant. You know, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Houston. That, that's why it seemed like maybe you're trying to stick it to college football. Yeah, I mean, we weren't sticking it to anybody. <laughs> we were kind of building backwards from Wednesday and thinking right. about, hey, how do we get to Wednesday? Well, we've got to play Saturday. Um, maybe when they see our schedule, they rethink how they want to sequence their weekend. You know, maybe they put two games on Friday and two on Saturday. We're kind of early in the day, one and four. Maybe they go a little later, five and eight. Um, there's room in this sandbox for all of us. Um, we have had good conversations, um, you know, with Bill Hancock, with General Clark, with uh, Tony Petiti, um, you know, with the other conference commissioners. That this is no surprise to anybody when they see our schedule tonight. They they knew exactly what was coming. They and they better stop moving things if they saw what happened to the NBA where you came in and bludgeoned the NBA on Christmas. Um, <laughs> let me end it with this because I feel like this is a question. I'm go- I know I will get asked this question from week one to the end of the season, and it's very complicated. So maybe you can say it, and then I'm going to post this clip every time someone asks me this question. If you don't mind, can you give me and my listeners the flex rules going into the season about what can be flex? Because even last year, I remember we were screaming about games. We wanted flex, and they couldn't be flexed. So to the best you can, I don't want you to spend 10 minutes on it, but explain it how it's going to work in 2024. Yeah, I'll try to keep it as simple as I can. Yeah. Uh, Sunday night football, flexible ske- flexible scheduling can start as early as week five. It's rare that we would flex out of a game in October whose season is really over, right, in week seven. Right, right, but right. flexible scheduling for Sunday night can start as early as week five, usually done on a two-week runway, two-week uh, out. Um, and when we get really late in the season, when you get down into those final weeks of the season, 15, 16, 17, and obviously 18, that runway can be as short as one week. We want to make sure we're moving games only if they're going to have the playoff implications that we're all hoping for. Um, and we haven't really flexed that much on Sunday night historically, right. maybe one, two games a year. It doesn't happen that often. It all depends on how clear the crystal ball is here in May. And what do any of us know? It's sports. But Flexible scheduling for Sunday nights. We've been doing it since 2006. One or two games a year starts as early as week five. Flexible scheduling for Monday nights. Um, I'd have to say the bar is probably a little bit higher, right? You're moving days. You're asking fans to change their plans. You're asking teams to change charters and hotels. It's pretty ironic that last year we didn't flex any Sunday night games. The only flex we had was a Monday game. 
we got a little lucky there because you ended up moving that Philadelphia Seattle game to prime time. And you were worried maybe about Philadelphia having to go across the country and kind of shorten that week coming back. But they had the full week because they were playing on Monday against the Giants. So everything kind of lined up to make the right move for a Monday night flex last year. But again, probably if the bar for Sunday night flex is higher, it's probably even a little higher now for Monday. And we've talked about how thin maybe some of the Sunday afternoons get as more games get deployed in other places. So there's just not that much inventory to be able to point to on a Sunday afternoon to grab it, to move it to prime. And CBS and Fox each get to protect Protect, one game a week. And right. when can Monday they night got their schedule tonight? And if they're looking at a, you know, Houston Baltimore game and they get all the way to week 15 and the NFL says, Hey, we want to take that to prime time. It's a zero sum game and anything good for NBC is not good for CBS. So CBS and Fox each get to protect a game every week runway or, or, or barometer really bar for Sunday night. High, higher still for Monday, higher, even more for Thursday night. Yes. we What, have Thursday night what, flex, what we week can Monday night start the flex uh, week 13. Week 13. Okay, go ahead and then do Thursday Okay, and then Thursday night, week 14, but it's got to be done four weeks out. Can we really say a month out that any NFL game is no longer worthy of prime time or isn't going to have playoff implications? So I can check with me. The notion of every game is flexible while true. (laughs) I don't think you're really going to see that many moving pieces. Okay, perfect. So that's what we got. So week five for Sunday night, 13 for Monday night, week 14 for Thursday night, Thursday night, four weeks out. The other two, it's like 12 days out or something like that. Yeah, two weeks out for Mondays, two weeks out for the Sundays until you get to about week 14, and then one week out if we need it, and four weeks out for Thursdays. (laughs) I think I covered everything. Um, And I didn't complain about streaming, so that's a victory. (laughs) I I will say this, you know, I can play, at least you guys are going, you know, who can, if you go to Netflix, who can argue with it? You know, I do think... It'll be interesting if someone's at some house on Christmas and that person doesn't have Netflix yeah. and, if, and it could, could, Netflix? could cause a nice family fight. Somebody's got Netflix, right? I mean, who doesn't have Netflix? But Well, they've cracked down on the password sharing. I went through this with my dad two weeks ago. I had to get him his own account. So, um, But it's worth it. It's worth it. Yes, the NFL. Um, all right. Are you doing like a million interviews tomorrow? You know what? Just a few. I, I think people are sick of hearing from me. And uh, there's a lot of really talented, intelligent, uh, hardworking people on our staff. If you don't mind, let me just shout out a couple. I was of just going to say, you give me, Bo, I want the right? amount, who exactly does the schedule? Give me how many yeah, people. The, the team is, is actually pretty tight. Uh, Ani yeah. Bose, I think you know, he's done your yep. pod before. Uh, he's been with the league coming up on 15 years now, kind of comes out of the events department. So he's kind of got that big game feel. He used to be the guy running the Stanley Cup trophy presentation with the white gloves and the red carpet. So he's kind of applying that big game feel to some NFL events, whether they're international or, or, or key games throughout the regular season. Um, Blake Jones is on our team. He kind of grew up in the game. His dad uh, ran the Jaguars and the Packers for a while. So that's a guy that grew up in NFL locker rooms on sidelines. He was a ball boy. He's loaded equipment into trucks before. Uh, Every time we build a schedule, we say, hey, isn't this great for television? He's kind of the voice of reason sometimes. It says, hey, think about what you're doing to the team right here, whether it's travel or turnaround time or how late they get home, injured players, stuff like that. Um, We've got Donna Ponte, our senior football executive. She's in the room with us. She's on every Zoom. She's looking at every schedule from a competitive standpoint. Are we doing the right thing to this team or that team? Is that a line we shouldn't cross? Is that a fatal flaw in any one of these schedules? Uh, She's got a whole crew of people working with her, the data and analytics side. We've got an incredibly intelligent analytics team run by a guy named Mike Lopez, a former college professor that we literally found in a classroom somewhere and basically kidnapped him and brought him into the league office and kind of helping us with the numbers behind all the big decisions Uh, Maybe the unsung hero of the scheduling team, Charlotte Carey. I think you know her. She's kind of the one that looks at every Sunday afternoon, CBS and Fox, which, as you mentioned, is getting more strained every year. And she's basically got a map in her head every time she looks at a schedule. Where's that game going to go? 30% here, 20% there. So it's not just about the best games in prime. It's also about making good Sunday afternoons. Uh, We all work for Hans Schroeder, EVP of media. He handles all of our television deals and obviously handled the Netflix deal here. So it's imperative that a guy like that is involved in the schedule process because these really are billion dollar decisions and they've got to be made by somebody who's used to cutting billion dollar deals. And that ain't me, that's for sure. And then uh, (laughs) lucky enough to still have Howard Katz on the team. Uh, I hope the guy never retires. Frankly, Mm -hmm. he's an incredible wealth of knowledge and and offers an incredible amount of of heft and weight and and respect 
to the team. So kind of tight. We keep it pretty small. Uh, we added Lucy Popko to the team a couple of years ago. Josh Helmrich joined us for a little bit, but really that's about it. You're talking about six or eight people total responsible for all 272 games and, you know, a hundred billion dollars. It's, it's a, it's a gargantuan task and, and everybody really lives and dies and, and breathes this thing for 14 weeks. And uh, everybody deserves at least a couple of days now. Absolutely. You didn't, you didn't involve Taylor Swift in the process of what game she'll be at when the Eras she tour is. Man. She tore in. We had, we had, she had to drop her double <laughs> album. I think she's where in Australia somewhere now. We, uh, we did not check in with her. You but, didn't try to maximize her potential at the game. So then the networks could show her 5,000. As we were taking, I'm as sure we were still touring through the fall. Yeah, she is. As we were taping this literally just two minutes ago, a tweet from Variety. The two NFL games on Netflix on Christmas Day 2024 will be Kansas City Chiefs versus Pittsburgh Steelers, presenting the possibility that Taylor Swift will be in attendance to root on her boyfriend, Chiefs tight end, Travis Kelsey. They, the NFL they can't. That's it. What more does the league need? What more does the league need? Or an entertainment product. right? <laughs> Mike, appreciate it. I know it's a, it's a busy time, so thanks and uh, good luck for the season. To Happy to come back, kind of mid season, maybe, and let's see how some of these We'd early love it. bets paid off and what we're kind of looking ahead to down the stretch with some flexible scheduling moves. Uh, let's see how clear our crystal ball was. Maybe we'll connect again, kind of mid season, and, and see how we're doing. All right, I would love that. Thanks, Mike. You got it. Good to see you, Jimmy. Take care. All right, joining me now, as he does every single week from WFAN Radio in New York, SNY TV in New York, my buddy Sal Licata. Sal, how are we doing on this fine week? Not bad. I mean, uh, you know, we've been better, but we're all right. Looking forward to having a conversation with you. There, there are so many places I can start. I'm going to go with this one. I know you're an Aaron Rodgers fan, and yes. you like Aaron. So I'm just curious, are you paranoid that the government will put kitty porn on your computer to cancel you like Aaron is? It never crossed my mind until I heard him say it. So I would say no. Um, you don't you think know. maybe someone in the government doesn't like your like New York Mets opinions and then maybe they'll infiltrate your computer? No, does it have to be somebody from the government, or could it be people well, on Twitter? Well, as as is as is the Aaron Rodgers way, you know, he doesn't come out and say it. He, he the, the exact quote was, "They, who the fuck they is? They could put something on your computer to cancel you. They could set you up for something. Set you up for something. Thankfully, me, I don't watch porn." I, I have, well, I mean, that was the most, I guess, perplexing thing about it, where I was like, huh, how can oh, somebody see, I, not, not watch porn? Like, I, see, I don't understand. I that. totally disagree. I think it's the fact that he thinks he's important enough that someone, I don't know who they is. I, I would assume he means the government. I, I don't know who the they is, but there's a they out there that can somehow get to his laptop and put the kitty porn on his laptop and then cancel him. Yeah, I'm not sure how that would work. Um, okay. I just wanted what I to check. Say is I am a fan of Aaron Rodgers on the field, first and foremost. And I do agree with a lot of what he says off the field as far as like his mentality and being himself and being comfortable with himself and that. But the political stuff and the alien stuff and the, <laughs> you know, in this particular case stuff. I'm not, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not with Rogers on that. Listen, I think it's one thing. I think a lot of people get whacked out in this day and age. What I'm fascinated by is the paranoia. Like who's infiltrating your computer? Like you're Aaron Rodgers. You're not. All right, but let, me, let me ask you something. Has it, cause it has crossed my mind. Not with that. But with whoa, the whoa, AI whoa, whoa. Stop right there. Stop right there. Because you're going to do what he does, and I'm not playing that game. What has crossed your mind? I'm going to say it. So what's crossed my mind is the, you know, like every everybody's got this AI stuff where you yeah, now yeah, yeah. hear, right, yeah. so like they could technically make anybody say yes. anything. Yes. That has crossed my mind. Right. In where, oh, well, what if somebody, you know, AI generated something that I said, but I didn't really say it. 
Like it's, right. it's an AI. Like, and that's that's legit. But his quote was, "They could put something on your computer no, to know, cancel you." So right. again, I'm, I I need to start with who is they? <laughs> I I'm assuming I'm assuming government. Right. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to get that out of the way. All right. Um, I just, what I love about it is he's the one after the season that said anything that doesn't have to do with football has to stop. But, you know. And he's on every podcast known to man that but has just nothing so, to do with football. I just can't imagine being that paranoid. Like, I could, you know, like Howard Stern has had this famous bit for years, which I find hysterical, which is when he watches porn, he gets very nervous and he covers the camera on his on his computer i can find like that is i think normal paranoia but right. again again i just want to be clear because i don't want to misquote because then he says you know they could put something on your computer to cancel you first of all if so like okay well what cancel. were they talking about before that did you listen to the whole thing i think I they were not. talking about like jeffrey epstein and pedophilia oh okay so again I don't know. Yeah. Again, well, but again, the quote was if, if we have to get anything that doesn't have to do with football out of this team. So, all right. Well, I, the, I, where I was going to start before that quote came out yesterday was I was going to let everyone know. Now, if you're a diehard listener, and I know there are some out there because I've gotten tweets about this. Sal and I have talked about this little sick game we play where we try to make sure we we are the first ones to break the news of a death to each other. It all started when I sent text a text to Sal many years ago that just said Whitney Houston dead. So Sal last week thought he was gonna get me. And he sent me one. a text, Jimmy Johnson dead. <laughs> but it turns out it wasn't the coach and Fox Jimmy Johnson. So one you have to the- be you have to be careful playing this game. That's all I'm going to say. You do. One of the guys in the fan newsroom goes, oh, shit, Jimmy Johnson died. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? And now I'm like, as he's saying that, I'm getting my phone ready to text you. And he goes, yeah, Jimmy Johnson dead. And I'm and I see the headline. So I sent without confirming. And he goes, oh, wait a minute. This was former 49ers, whatever, or Jimmy Johnson. I was like, shit. Love it. That that one I would, and, and the reason why I was quick with the trigger was because it was a, I thought, sports media, sports right. guy, which I knew right. you'd be on top of. Right. So to beat you with that one was going to take a lot of effort. Yeah. That was the first time in our little game here that there was a, a mishap. Yeah. I quickly did say, oh, wait, my bad. Not him. Well, yeah, because I started Googling and I didn't see anything. And I said, what now? What's going on here? And then, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's sick. I know you're a Hard Knocks fan, and then I also know that you have to consume everything that's New York sports because of your job. So what do, what do you make of them doing now in off-season Hard Knocks? This is not – so this Hard Knocks is going to be from July 2nd to July 30th, five episodes. Then they'll have the regular Hard Knocks after that on HBO. But there's going to be – what they're calling it an off-season Hard Knocks, July 2nd to July 30th, and the team will be the New York Giants. This was announced on Wednesday – Will you watch it? Your thoughts? Yes, I will watch it. A, because I have to. B, because I am interested in the New York Giants. But I think it's going to be highly educational for me and for New York sports fans to learn about what goes on behind the scenes with the team that we talk about all the time. But if it were the Indianapolis Colts, would I be watching it? The answer is probably not. And I don't know if we need this in addition. I haven't actually talked to you about this, or I don't remember yeah. it. Do you watch the in-season ones? The Last year was the Jets, right? Oh, no, no, last year. Not the, oh, oh not the in-season. The, no, I do not watch the in-season ones, no. Me neither. Like, right. in theory, it sounds great. I'll get a behind-the-scenes look at it. But, like, in real time, I'm watching the games week to week. I don't got time to, like, follow along with that story. So I like the training camp one. I'm intrigued by this, and I certainly will watch it and learn from it because it's the Giants. Right. But I don't know. I don't watch the in-season ones. And if it were a team, if, if it's a team that I'm not interested in, then do I watch? No. Probably not. You make a great, great point because I, I think the number one reason I don't watch the in-season one is because in-season, there's football, if you're, if you're into college football like I am, there's football on almost every night. 
So to squeeze that in is not easy. It's very hard. I find it very difficult to watch anything other than football from September to January. So that's an excellent point. I do think the what they're calling the quote-unquote offseason one with the Giants, I think I'd be more prone to watch that because in the month of July, there's nothing to watch. Right. So I'd be much more inclined to casually flip that on than the in-season one. I will say, though, like they said, the debut is going to be July 2nd. Like, that's yeah. July 2nd? Well, but wow. it's HBO. You can watch it anytime. Yeah, I know, but it's just... Well, I guess I'm thinking radio show purposes. Like, right, that, right. So then you're going to release it where everybody's going to be on vacation that week. Right. So I, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I'm going to be into it. And I hope we learn something from I really hope it's behind the, the scenes. I want to pull back the curtains and learn what right. went into Saquon Barkley leaving or how much did they try to keep him back? What's going on with Daniel Jones, the draft and all that stuff. So there's a lot of intrigue there. Yeah. This could Maybe this is even better than the, the training camp one, which has kind of become stale. <sighs> I think you'll actually love it because I think you're going to get so much content for the radio show out of it. Well, that, in the middle of July, there's nothing to talk about except yeah. the Yankees and the Mets. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, the Brady roast, which I find fascinating that we talked about it so much and then it got so much attention. I have to say, I was shocked, beyond shocked, that Brady came out on Tuesday and said he regrets it because of the reaction his kids had to it and because of the way it affected his kids. And what I'm shocked about is, I mean, listen, I like, there's nothing wrong with that sentiment. It, you know, makes him sound like a good dad that he has a regret about the effect it had on his kids. But what I'm shocked is, did he not know what a roast was? Had he never seen one before? How did he not know? How did he not think that these people were going to go into that? And it wasn't just, Nikki Glazer and, and Jeff Ross, who hammered the family stuff, his former, you know, Edelman, Grant, all of them. Right. I am shocked that he was shocked. How old are his kids? I don't I don't even know. I think like, they're all, you know, 15 and under, 13 and under, something like that, yeah, maybe. I, I maybe I thought they were a little bit younger. So 15 year olds are gonna be on social media and see all that said. But yeah, I mean, Tom Brady isn't stupid. So there's no, I mean, I would think there's no way he didn't know what he was getting himself into. It's, so I almost feel like this is a, a forced thing that, you know, maybe he got a talking to from his ex-wife or whatever. And, you know, it's not okay. And, and this, they didn't, what'd they say about the kids? All the, like, well, it was, it was more about, about like your family's yeah. torn apart, your family, your family. And okay, well, I also don't think, right. I'm sure, listen, if he has kids who are, let's say, 13 and up. Okay, I'll Google to see how old his kids are. But let's say he has kids, I'd say like 13 and up, okay? Those kids are going to know exactly what, oh, he's got a 16-year-old. Okay, so, so he's got yeah. 16, 14, and 11, okay? Those They're kids- old. They're old enough. They absolutely, when, when there's a joke made about, um, Tom, how do you not know your wife was cheating on you? She was taking eight classes a week and was still a white belt. Or, you know, the dumbest thing you ever said was, sure, honey, go take jujitsu. Those kids are seeing those jokes in the prism of my mom cheated on my dad. Right. So that's how the kids are affected. And I, I, I get what he's saying, but I don't understand then why you agreed to. I, I, I'm getting the impression he didn't know what a roast was or never saw a roast before. I would be willing to bet he got a, a tongue lashing from Giselle after the fact. I, I felt bad for him because on Mother's Day on Sunday, he had a very nice post about, you know, mothers and all they do. And in it, he included like, a, you know, he had multiple slides, his mom, Giselle, Bridget Moynihan. And the comments were like, oh, trying to make up for the roast. Oh, someone got in trouble for the roast. Oh, someone's 100%, in the. Do- 100% you know. he did. 100% he did. There, there's no doubt about it. And then even in the apologies, like. You know, uh, I, I regret it because of the toll it took on my children, and that's what I care about the most. Why the hell would you do this roast if that's what you were concerned about? He wasn't thinking about that. He was thinking about himself, either the attention, the money, which I also don't understand. Like, he's got all the money in the world. He's got a great broadcasting job now. It's paying him a boatload of money. What do you – I don't understand it. What, what do you need the money for? Yeah, I don't, and I'm not sure he did it for the money. I think maybe he did it because he's going to go into broadcasting and he's trying to show people a different side of him. And, you know, I think there are a lot of people who 
don't like him because he's beaten the shit out of their teams for so many years. And I think he's trying to say like, okay, look, I got a personality. I'm a funny guy. I can laugh. I can have people make fun of me. I can laugh. It's a way to win over people. And I guess it was just ended up being a big miscalculation in his part. But I, I, if I interviewed him, I would just love to know, have you ever seen a roast before? You know, He said yeah. he loved all the jokes about him. So yeah. I don't know. All right. Moving on. I forgot to bring this up last week and it happened to me two weeks ago. I don't, I can't believe I forgot to bring this up. <clears throat> you saw this because I posted it on social media, but I, I just wanted to discuss this quickly. A couple of weeks ago, I'm at a diner in Connecticut. I think it was, uh, well, I shouldn't say because I don't want, anyway, I get the bill and on the bill is a $1.31 charge for sanitary inspection. Okay. So you have the bill for the food. Subtotal, tax, sanitary inspection. So I say to the manager, like, I'm like, what is this? He goes, oh, it's on the bill. We'd look at the bill. So then I look in the bottom of the bill and it says, to ensure we maintain the highest standards, we have added a fee for inspections from food safety and inspection service. Now, obviously, I would never go back to this restaurant ever again. And I it, now restaurants, they're going to start charging the customers for the inspection and safety fee that's required of them by law. If this comes to New York, like that's what shocked me. It shocked me that this happened to me in Connecticut, not New York city. I would have thought Manhattan would have been the first place to yeah. try to pull this bullshit. Yeah. But I just want everyone out there to beware, be vigilant and watch your checks. Yeah. It's a good catch by you. I was like, what the hell is that? Never heard of that before. Ridiculous. Absolutely Service ridiculous. for everything. It's ridiculous. It really is ridiculous. I've had enough of it. I got a tweet. <laughs> excuse me. I got a tweet from a guy who works on the Howard Stern show, who does the wrap-up show. His name is Rashan. Rashan. Um, he does the wrap-up show with Gary. He sent me a tweet. He's out in LA, and he said that, and he showed it to me. There's a restaurant that charges people a fee for the security in the restaurant. Now, I understand restaurants, uh, you know, food prices going up, et cetera. But like, if you want to overcharge me, put it in the with the food. Don't make it a separate thing that it's going to piss me off in the bill. Yeah, I guess. Right. Overcharge for the chicken parm and we wouldn't see it. Right. But don't right. put a little. Yeah. I'd rather yeah, like, than that. You're right. And by the way, it would be your decision to either not go because the chicken parm was too much or because you see that fee. Right. I guess that's the only thing. Like they could charge whatever they want. It's then up to us to say, well, I'm not going. Right, hundred percent. So I got an I got an open face turkey. Right, it was yeah. twenty one dollars. If they would have charged me twenty one thirty one, I wouldn't have batted an eye. <laughs> but instead, they charged me sanitary inspection. Now I'm never going to go back again. Oh, and I just want to bring this up quickly. So I had to go. I went with my niece who got a hamburger, and the bill on the bill it says hamburger only tomato, and then there's a little bit of a space, and then it says medium American deluxe French fries. And I got like five to eight responses from people on Twitter going, who only orders a hamburger with tomato only? Who gets a hamburger with just, how? oh, how is a hamburger just $16? They didn't read the part where it said American and deluxe and french fries, so I had to mute all of those people. <laughs> so, um, I, I just, that's it. It's not, I'm not, I can't. All right. Do you think you're ever going to get to a point where you stop reading the comments? Because I'm there for the most part. Like, I'll see a couple but I don't even bother reading the comments anymore. They're so out of control and insane, and it does no good. Like, you ever going to get to that point where you just quit it? Funny you should say that, because I thought we were going we to do something we haven't done in ages, and that's read some reviews. Okay. But I will say, I don't think I'll ever get to a point where I don't read the comments, because my comments are not that bad. Right. I get, I don't get many hateful comments at all. I just don't have patience for the ones who are stupid and don't like here's a so like if you don't read what I'm writing I have to mute you that I don't right. have the patience for there was one yesterday I don't know well whatever anyway yeah. you know what I should start doing I should start saving the tweets that cause me to mute people and then read those tweets to you and then you can judge whether I should be muting those people yeah but that's fair again <clears throat> I if don't tweet me if you have not thoroughly read my tweet, because then I just, if you're wrong, I have to meet you. All right. Anyway, 
I'm going to read reviews because people are slacking with the reviews. I'm not getting a ton of reviews and it really bothers me. So if you're listening to this, I need a review. Leave some reviews. But what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to go through April's reviews and a little bit of May. And we'll see what we got. And hopefully me reading these reviews will inspire people to leave some right. reviews on Apple. Right. All right, here we go. Amy R. Chapman, grateful for Jimmy and Sal. Love the show. Please rebook Jeff Passan and glad that SI is going to continue to be around. At the beginning of April, the pod yeah. was off for a week. We had some issues with new operators. The new operators, no issues with. They're phenomenal. The old operators uh, played some disgusting games. <laughs> and um, I had Jeff Passan booked for the week we had to take off. I have to get him back on. Probably when the NBA playoffs are over, we'll, I'll try to get him on. Uh, let's see. This is East Spring 18. Despite all the challenges at SI, Jimmy just keeps getting better. Not spending oxygen on silly rants regarding Kelsey Swift has made the show a lot more focused on media topics and the evolution of the NFL recently for the better. Give Jimmy a booker so he doesn't have to worry about that so much, although he does jo a great job booking the guests. I, I, believe me, I still get annoyed by Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, but it's the offseason, so we're not discussing it as much. All right, Doc Bill 33 Usually the best thing weekly to listen to, Jimmy talks about the current fun stories of the day. When Sal is on, it's great. Almost a mini Stern show when they used to go behind the scenes. In my opinion, the best part of the Stern show. Not in touch with wrestling, so I skipped those episodes. Or fast forward to Sal if he is in on, if he's in the notes, because that's the description. Mm -hmm. Gary as 12. Title of this is Sal. Five stars. While the interview and post-Yankee Life Chicken with John Sterling was great, Stal Sal stole the show this week. <laughs> Sal stole the show this week. Between the electricians at his house and getting the text while he works and then the Ranger game story. I love how he just opens up about going to the game and not telling his wife. There is no way this ends well for him. Can't wait to hear what happens next week when he checks in. Keep up the great work. Jimmy South Jersey is listening. Now, someone actually, I think it was a friend of mine. I was so, Maybe it was when I was at that Kentucky Derby party. Someone said, like, did Sal ever tell his wife he was going to the Ranger game? So would you like to update us on that? Yeah, it was. Uh, I did tell her and she didn't ask any questions and I didn't get any further into it. It was just one of those. Did she just mutter son of a bitch under her breath? No, no, didn't even didn't even. I was like, oh, OK, I didn't know what was coming. Like it was it was like I threw the jab out there and was waiting for the punch back and I. I didn't really get it. And then I was like, all right, where's this going? And luckily it didn't go anywhere. Okay. All right. That's good. We, to we hear. were good to go. Somehow we made it through. Uh, we made it through that one. Well, hot on the heels of that, we have a review from someone named B. Stooler who says, great show in the title and then only left four stars. Come, Come on. We need five. And this is his entire review. Quote, time to invite Sal's wife on for a segment. <laughs> 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 that's a great idea but that's not gonna happen <laughs> now just to show you just to show you what the internet is all about and how the internet works this is the final review from doc lou iowa five star five stars so and great stuff with katie katie nolan from last week mm -hmm. quote the sal family issues are getting old Ah, there you go. All can right. you talk to him about sports and less about whether he can watch watch it due to family conflicts? Absolutely not. The last thing I want to talk to Sal about is sports. <laughs> First of all, we wouldn't agree on anything probably, and it's yeah. boring. You but can I'd hear much me talk about hear. sports four hours a day, five days a week, if you'd like, on the fan. Right. So I mean, right. I'd rather hear about how Sal navigated Mother's Day this past weekend. Uh, was that this weekend? Yeah, you went to your mom's on Saturday. Oh God! Yeah, it was just, it was just a long <laughs> it was just a long weekend. Up early Saturday, you know, we talked about it. Working all week, Monday through Friday. Up early Saturday, out to my mom's house. The good thing is, when you do leave early, there is no traffic. Right. So right, right. I love that. Like the Cross Bronx Expressway. If you're from New York, you know it is the worst road in America. Yeah, but if you if you leave early enough, you're good to go. So that was fine. But then there all day long left the next morning again no traffic on the way back but then home to my wife um i'll give you a quick one because i know you like this oh no yeah i bought now we bought a house so right. like they, they, like that's the gift 
Right. There is no Mother's Day gift this year. The house is the gift. We're trying to oh, manage and get oh, through. Oh, oh, that's a mistake, but go ahead. I, I brought, I brought home mistake. two cards that I, I like. I didn't just spend two seconds in the store picking them out. I actually did go through them and read them a little bit. And one was from my daughter, which I wrote in like crayon out with her hand, like you held her hand. Okay, let's write to mommy, whatever. And I gave her a card, my wife a, a card from both of us. And I'm thinking like, uh, I'm the hero. Here I am. Yeah. And instead I was met with, you're not as creative as you used to be. You're not as thoughtful. And I, I said, you're not my mother. Oh, you're no, my wife. You, no, you didn't say that. You didn't say I that. Did. Oh my God. I'm getting like the cringe. I'm getting like the douche chills. You didn't say that. I did. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't immediately. It, how about instead of saying that, you say something like, "I didn't have time to," or like, "I tried to get it," or "I, oh, I, I, I messed up." I was doing the right thing. I got two cards. I'm like, we just have, like, what do you want? So, I, like, I, you know, you. So if you went on your- Twitter, if you if I, if you went on Twitter and said, "Me and my wife just bought a house. Do I need to get her a Mother's Day gift?" Yeah. Everyone's gonna say you need to get her a Mother's Day gift. Come on, use your brain. I mean, uh, well, flowers? Maybe, Did you at least get flowers? Come on now. What a waste that would be. That would have but that would have accomplished something at least. You went empty handed just with a stupid card. And then guess what? Two cards. One from the daughter, one from okay, me. Okay, no offense. One or two cards is no difference if you don't get a gift. Now, don't act Whoa. like two you're trying to act like two cards is the equivalent of a gift. It is because it's one from my daughter. If I didn't get that, I mean, she was already saying, what, nothing from Maddox? I go, come on. I wrote his, who's the dog. I go, I wrote his name on the card. Like, come on. Come you you couldn't, you couldn't find one item to purchase? <laughs> We're on a budget. <laughs> You're on a what budget. How many Ranger and Nick playoff games have you got? To? So, so then we go to her brother's house and guess what he did? What? He got her flowers. The brother got her flowers. Yeah. Oh, so you went even further my, into the doghouse. See what my brother got? I'm like, that's great. That's oh, he. I mean, he's out of line there too because he's he's doing you dirty. Well, he he probably assumed I got something, but I just assumed that my wife was under the impression that I was. We just bought a house. This is the gift. This is the gift. All that's going. On. The plumber that came this week to fix that leak downstairs. That's the gift. That's so, the, so, so for mother, so she can go and tell her friends. So she's with her friends. Say, oh, what did your husband Sal get you for mother's day? The plumber came and fixed the leak. Get your head I out mean, of your I, I get, on. we've never made a big deal about mother's day, father's day. All of a sudden now it's a little bit of an issue. So I, I took the L on, I meanwhile, I'm thinking like, Hey, I'm back home. I came home this morning. I gave you a whole day to yourself yesterday. You were with your friend. I was, took the baby. Like, isn't that a gift? Like, come on. I can't believe you thought you were going to get away with two chintzy cards. I mean, that's ridiculous. She's my wife. It's not wife's day. Like, I appreciate what she does every day. I think if I were you, I would take some mental notes and try to do a little better next year. That's all I'm going to say. We'll see. All right. If that doesn't get us some reviews, I'm not sure what will. What uh, did you figure out? Are, are you still doing a streaming cable service or did you get a box with a hard wire? I haven't had time to do it, unfortunately. But yeah, this week. Why? It's not like you were out buying Mother's Day gifts. Yeah, right. It's not like I had a second to breathe for myself last week. Um, I had to. I, I do have to do that. I have to figure out. I will go directly to the Optimum store and request a box and ask them what I need to do to get this thing up and running. If not, I'm going to go in a different direction. All right. Well, Sal, hopefully next week when we speak to you, you're out of the doghouse. No more. Hey, just sports next week. No more family stuff. We can, you can let us know if anyone put any um, kitty porn on your laptop to cancel you. Tell us, give us a report next week. (laughs) All right. All right. Take it easy. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. All right, my many, many thanks to Mike North, Sal Licata. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe to SI Media with Jimmy Trina. If you've missed any past episodes, go into the archives, check them out. Katie Nolan was on the podcast last week. 
had a big discussion about the Tom Brady roast. John O'Ran two weeks ago on the NBA's television future. John Sterling, newly retired voice of the Yankees. ESPN's Malika Andrews, WWE's Cody Rhodes, all recent guests. So give those a listen. Subscribe to the pod and rate and review on Apple. All right, that wraps it up. We'll see you next week. Stay safe and thanks for listening.